How's it going everybody? My name is Charlie Thompson and I am the owner and founder of Postler Studio and in today's tutorial we're going to be covering tracking inside of Nuke and bringing it into Houdini. So first of all I just want to show you this footage here. This is the footage we're going to be tracking. I have added in a water element here um, which I will cover in a, another tutorial. So first of all let's just back out of this, uh, get rid of this. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to open up Nuke. So first of all, you want to add in a read image, which we will be getting our footage from. So I'm going to do the fluid sim here, and it'll show it up here. At the moment, you're not viewing anything because you haven't selected this and into the footage. So now you can see the footage perfectly fine. We can zoom in. We can bring this down a little bit so we can view it a little bit better. Um, so if we just play this back, all it is is the footage. Now, what you want to do is you want to add in a sharpen just so we can get a bit more points in there um, and it's a little bit more detail. So if we just bump that there and leave it as it is, what you want to do is you want to add in a camera tracker. And this is where we're going to do all the tracking. So double click it. It'll bring this section up here. You can come over to the settings. I normally change the number of features, which is the number of points, to roughly around about 500. Um, in this case, you could probably do it for 300 to 1,000 personal preference. Um, if the footage is less detailed and it's not picking up as many points, just bump that up a little bit more. So. Now what you want to do is you want to come back to the camera tracker and you want to track. So what this is going to do is it's actually going to go from frame one to the end frame and then back again. So I will be back with you in a second. Okay, so if we scrub through the timeline now, um, you'll see all the points tracked. And what we can do now is we can actually solve it. So underneath the track, just press solve. This won't take too long only a couple of seconds um, and it'll solve them so what you can see is you can see three different colors so you've got the green you got the orange and you got the red so the red they're not being tracked very well um, the orange are the unsolved trackers green are the ones that are perfectly tracked to the spot so what we want to do is we actually want to get rid of the red and the orange so if you come over to the auto tracks, we can actually bump the minimum length up. So I normally go around about 12. I bring the max track error down. If you see it, if I bring it all the way down, everything's going to go red. Um, if we just bring this up to around about, I'd say 2.8 there. And this one down to roughly around about 5. So now... What we can do is we can delete the rejected and delete the unsolved. It's just like that. And now you can see there's no red and no orange. So all the tracking points here are all perfect. And what we need to do now is we actually need to add in a ground plane. So I'm going to use this surface here as our ground. So I'm going to select majority of the points that are in here. So by selecting it, just going across like this, and then holding shift and selecting the more points. So I think that'll do fine. Right click and come down to ground plane and set to selected. So this will basically mean that if we go into 3D now, this section here will be our ground. So if I show you that, you'll see that the grid is our ground. It basically finds um, between all those what the center is. So there's our ground plane. And now what we need to do is we actually need to add it in our scene. So if you go back over to the camera tracker and the export over here, if you come down to scene and create, it'll actually create our camera camera tracking cloud as well as our scene so if we select this now you're not going to see any of them uh, you're going to see the tracking points you're not going to see the actual footage so to make do with that if you add in a scan line render 
and what you'll notice is there's three different arrows here one camera one object and one background so the object is our scene camera is the camera and our background is actually our footage so if we go and view this now you'll see we've got the points in there um, and we've got our footage so that is fab and that is what we need so now if we just get rid of all these and just view that we can now actually go and export this out as an FBX so we can import it into Houdini if you press tab and type in right Jira. Uh, what you'll notice is we can't actually click it onto the scanner um, as this is just like a, a viewport kind of thing for us to see all the points with the footage so if we put this into our scene here um, and if we just come and find a place where we can save this to I'm going to go into my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder I'm just going to call it tutorial tracking and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to type in uh, tracking dot fbx and then open now all you need to do is you need to execute so um, if you click that and the import we have 1 to 218 which is our frame range if that comes up 1 to 1 uh, just change it to 1 to whatever your ending frame is so if you press ok this will run through it now it will create our fbx which we can then import into Houdini. So I'll be back with you in a second. So we're now in Houdini. Uh, what you're gonna do is you wanna come up to file and import, and then you wanna come down to Filmbox FPX. So it'll bring this little, like, uh, this little tab up. What you need to do is you need to click this little icon here and go to where you've just saved your FPX to. So I saved mine in the desktop and in the tutorial tracking and then under tracking and then accept and then just import it okay so what you'll notice is it'll bring it in as a sub network it'll have all the points and the camera you can see at the moment that the nulls and the points are actually extremely large so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually jump inside and we're just going to make these a little bit smaller so i'm going to move the camera out of the way select all the rest of them now what you want to do is you want to come into the uniform scale and change this down to 0 0.01 and what you'll notice is they're a lot lot smaller um, and a lot easier to see whereabouts each one is. Next as you can see there is quite a lot of them um, actually in the scene so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the bottom half here it will randomly select all of them um, and I will just click delete. Okay, so that's deleted uh, majority of them. What you want to do is we actually want to view it through the camera. And at the moment, it's all in there. Everything's got the uh, tracking points and everything. But there's no footage. So if you come over to the camera and if you come to the view and come down to the background image, we want to import our footage. Just to let you know, this needs to be an image sequence. Um, I went on and previously saved this as a JPEG sequence. So if I just open that up now. So I've imported that in and as you can see, we've got our footage, we've got the track in um, and everything seems to be working fine. There is a few tracking points here, um, which I would probably end up deleting because it seems to be moving randomly. Um, which is fine because you can just select it and delete it. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick preview of a test. So I'm going to import our crag test geometry. Just import them in here. I am going to just zoom out a second, find out where he is. So here he is. He's a little bit bigger than what I want him to be. I'm going to put him 0.1. And I'm also just going to move them over for the matter of this. Actually, we'll leave them there. Bring it in. And as you can see already, it's tracked in there. Perfectly fine. Uh, you probably have to move it around a little bit, get it onto this flat surface here, which is our ground plane. And 
yeah, now he's in the scene. Um, that is it for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, send me a message, put a comment in the section below. Um, and I will see you in the next tutorial.